So let us know in the chat, man, how y'all feeling, man? Y'all want Larry back or would y'all let him walk? To me personally, man, I, I think, you know, I'm doing almost whatever it takes to keep him here. Um, as long as that number doesn't get too crazy, I think that he fits the mode. I think that he brings a certain level of playmaking, a um, certain level of nastiness to the front. I love his athletic ability, and I just think that he's a blue-collar guy. He's not one of those guys that if he gets paid even more so than he already has been compensated, that he is going to take his foot off the gas pedal or start to get complacent or rest on his laurels. Like, I don't think he's one of those guys. I think that he continues to get better for us. And he's just a young dude that's super familiar with the division, man. And like I say, super productive versus the run or the pass, man. So to me, I definitely would want to bring him back. Remember when we brought him in? This just popped up in my mm -hmm. mind right now. We brought him in. I think it was the same... We ah, uh, there was something going on with Mason. We like snubbed Mason. Yeah, it was like the we same week. In. Uh -huh. We like brought him in yep. and signed him. It's yep. Like, oh, we got the dude that was involved because in the helmet. Mason was Miles listed Garrett. as number two on the depth chart that week when we first did it, and then it was supposed to be Kenny. Is and that they what it switched was? it. Yeah, and then I thought that's when we had brought in Larry. And he's like, dude, what the heck? It's like, yo, that's the dude that bopped him in the head. And we was like, hey man, you can't be tripping on Larry though. Larry like that. Yeah. Oh, was, no, no, no. This might have been what it was. No, it was something else. You're right. Yeah. I think because that was that, that was, was later, later in the season. Yeah, that was later or, on. I think it was when they bumped Kenny to start getting like second. That's team what it was. Yeah. Like I, was I knew it was something with the depth chart. Because yeah. we, yeah, we had we had Ogan mm -hmm. before the preseason that's games definitely and in the yeah. training camp, good right? Good call. Good call. I think that's what it was. But yeah. Yeah, Mason get, just couldn't catch a break here. Uh, yeah, I'm with you. I just said, yeah. Yeah. I think it's a no brainer to try to bring him back. What he was doing with Cam Hayward and the interior of that defensive line. It was something really good, and he was apparently injured the whole year with yeah. a toe injury. So he I would like to see him that, fully yeah. healthy. And we knew coming in, he was coming off of an injury. That was why he didn't already have the mega deal. Um, so, like I said, that was not here's even what's intriguing healthy. to me. What do you think he's gonna get? What or what would be the mark you said if the number gets too crazy? He you, had what, eight last year. What did he make last year? Yeah, I think it, it was, was one for eight, right? Yeah, I think that's what it was. Eleven. So any yeah anything I over like 10. I like him at eleven. Like, that's probably, like, why I max out it. I don't want to go over there. Bro, I'm shocked at this. Because I'm thinking, all right, he played really good with us this year. He was supposed to get, like, 10 or 11 with Chicago on a multi-year deal. Yeah, that's deal. what I'm saying. Got eight with us on a one-year deal. Mm -hmm. Like, that's probably what he's going to be trying to get again. At the four. He's, a, he's yeah. another year older, so maybe you drop yeah. it to seven. Spot Rack has his calculated market value at $3.4 million. Nah, I don't believe that. Bleach Report had it around six or seven. Yeah. From personal experience, they have been wrong before. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> that would be a blessing for us, though, if that oh, somehow course, becomes yeah, true. And he's an underrated player. Yeah. So maybe it takes only smart teams to recognize that value. But all it takes is one team to recognize that value, and that's how the number gets ran up. You know. I can see. Yeah, I yeah. see it. I see it. Because as long as they don't have a dance partner, a dance partner, then. I think for Larry, your negotiation starts based off where you ended last year. We starting at eight, and we're going to work our way up. I think if you're the team, you're trying to keep him under double digits. I think if you're him, you're trying to get double digits because of everything we said. You weren't even all the way healthy. You weren't even practicing every day, and you still went out there and balled. You still was super effective. You still gave us numbers. You did all of this stuff, and we could feel that presence even when TJ wasn't out there. Also, that's the other part with him where yeah. it wasn't like – Man, he played well throughout. Right, certain players we talked about. It's like, man, when TJ wasn't out there, it didn't hit the same way. It was kind of watered down. That wasn't the case with Larry. Larry was one of them dudes that was a constant performer, one of those top dudes that we could really depend on in that front. I wonder if you could get him around that seven range if it's like a three-year deal, multi-year deal. You know what I mean? Multi-year makes sense. I think for him, it would give him some security and. It's 50 50 on how guys view the multi year. Some guys would view it and say, I don't want to take a lower number because now I'm going to be locked into this thing a year or two down the line. But if you're Larry, a guy who's come off of a year where you had to have surgery and that cost you a long term deal, the issue you were banged up, but you still were able to produce, maybe you say, okay, instead of me taking a, a four year or five year somewhere, what if I can get a three where I'm getting seven and a half, seven and a half each year or seven, eight, nine, and then we go from there? Like, it could be something like that. I don't know if that's going to be his mindset, but I just, from the guys that I've seen and personal experiences, like, it's usually one or the other with it. What could help us, and this goes back to what you're talking about, uh, Only it only takes one team, but his buzz is down 
more mm. this offseason compared to last year. You think so though? Where he was well, he was with the Bengals in that Super Bowl run oh, making play. Yeah, you know what I mean? So everyone saw so that everybody playoff kept seeing, run. Kept seeing it, yeah. Whereas like right here, obviously we wanted to make the playoffs, but yeah. Yeah, like I think he flew under the radar with the Steelers this yeah. year, league wide. To an extent, not yes. necessarily yeah. with us because we were seeing his yeah. plays being made. But the Steelers talk was more about picking and pickings, yeah, coming through at the end, yeah, and just how you know Najee Harris was starting to run the ball mm-hmm. better, T.J. Watt being back. Now, are you worried about the other stop that he hasn't made in the division yet, though? Because <laughs> they have to be ultra familiar with him and definitely waiting on him. You know, if he ain't I don't know. They, they got other problems to worry about right now. Yes and no, though. They got Lamar Jackson. They just paid a ton of money to Roquan Smith. Uh huh. Patrick Queen's got to be coming up here soon on uh-huh. a contract. So they got other They over here like, about. hey, man, Clay's about to get up out of here, though. So what's up? <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It could happen. <laughs> it could happen. I just saw if you're Ogan Joby, are you looking to do that, though? He probably going to come to Buffalo, pairing with Ed Oliver. <laughs> you know how that go. Are you looking yeah. to do that? All four teams in the AFC North? Hey, man, just pass <laughs> it around, man. <laughs> Don't you want to find one spot? It's like hey, your home. Hey, Settle so, down. Sometimes, sometimes you just want to be like a tumbleweed. You just want to just keep roaming and drifting, man. Home is where you lay your head at, you know? 